Hey men and warriors, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate Hartley and I share a weekly video with you every Monday about something related to menopause. Today I'm actually talking about how nasal breathing can support your mental health and your physical health throughout the menopause, also help to improve your symptoms. So we're going to break down nasal breathing into sort of three main components. You've got the biomechanical, the biochemical and the biopsychological. Just consider this for a moment. Your nose is part of your respiratory system. Your mouth is part of your digestive system. So if, although obviously you breathe through your mouth, it can go down into your lungs. It does not form part of your official respiratory system. And when you're breathing through your nose, I will go into it in more detail, but you are releasing nitric oxide, which is very beneficial for us. You are also stimulating the vagus nerve, which helps to um, stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. So it helps with that relaxation response. And you are also helping to balance the carbon dioxide sensitivity of your body. So a lot of us do a lot of almost like hyperventilating. If you're stressed, a lot of us are stressed in menopause. Our lives are really, really busy. And not to mention the fact that our hormones are driving us potty. And, you know, you might be feeling more depressed. You might be feeling more irritable. You might be feeling more anxious. You're sleeping worse. And you may have tight deadlines at work and the brain fog is just killing you off. And you'll find that, you know, you might be breathing literally in just sort of the upper aspect of your lungs and it's really shallow breathing. And eventually you become, your body becomes accustomed to that shallow breathing. Well, that, that almost, it doesn't starve your body of carbon dioxide. The, the body's incredibly clever, but it, it, it makes the body have to work harder in order to have the right level of carbon dioxide in your body. Your carbon dioxide is very, very important. It's not just a waste product of breathing oxygen in. Obviously, oxygen is incredibly important too. This whole video today is very much, I'm going to give you a few techniques to use as well, but it's very much about you understanding the benefit of breathing through your nose and giving you a few tips in order to help you reduce your sensitivity to carbon dioxide so that you can breathe more steadily, more deeply rather than bigly. I know when you think, okay, we'll take a deep breath and fill your lungs. We we all almost think that you have to, your belly sticks out and you have to sort of fill it until it pops. It's not about that so much. It's about breathing in a really calm way, but breathing deeply so that your breath, you can actually sort of physically imagine the breath going down into the, the lower section of your lungs. So allowing your lower rib cage to expand Yes, often, you know, when, when you hear about how to deep breathe, it will say, you know, allow your belly to move in and out. Really what you want to be focusing on is the lower section of your rib cage to be expanding just gently. I just breathed in through my mouth, didn't I? But it's because I'm trying to talk at the same time. You'll allow me that one, won't you? So this video really is just to inform you why nasal breathing is so beneficial for you and why it can help you manage your stress levels more effectively and bring balance to your body as well as understanding why mouth breathing is not as good as it might be and how to help you get over to help you get out of that habit of mouth breathing if that's what you do regularly so just gone over a little bit of the biomechanical stuff, you know, sort of the rib cage expanding down, down at the base of your rib cage. But think now, how are you sitting or lying or slouching? <laughs> you know, what, what's going on? Are you like this? Are you sitting forward? Are you hunched over your keypad or your phone? So many of us sit like this a lot of the time of the day. Or are you upright? Are your shoulders back? Are you allowing the expansion of your chest so that you can actually take you, know, you can fill your lungs effectively. When you're punched like this, every, every, apart from the fact your digestive system is all crunched up too, so it's not going to be good for eating food and trying to get the best, you know, taking the nutrients out of your food. It's probably going to make you more constipated and more gassy as well. But just be mindful of your posture. We should be sitting upright regularly. I mean, I was lucky. I did classical ballet for a long, long period of time. I'm sure that helps me maintain a good posture. I think I was born with a fairly straight back as well. And if you are not lucky enough to have been born with a straight back, you do have a bit of a curvature of the spine. Just be conscious about bringing it back. You know, maybe 
it can be hard work in actual fact as well sometimes to try and think oh god I've got to sit upright just getting used to every now and again just sitting back and pushing your shoulders back trying to sit up right I sit on a wobble cushion so I've got my office chair here but I, in fact I'll let me get off of it I've got two cushions here oh I feel really little now <laughs> it looks like I've shrunk I have a wobble cushion cushion it's got spiky bits on one side and then nipples on the other and then I have a donut ring my donut ring is memory foam I've had it for years I should probably renew it I sit on my donut ring because I have a very long coccyx <laughs> it's not something I brag about very often but I put the donut ring on top of the wobble cushion and this way I'm always correcting my balance it's really good if you if you struggle with lower back issues or you've got mobile sacroiliac joints like I have another reason why I strength train all the time because it keeps my core really strong so it stops that lower back pain but all the time I'm correcting on my seat so it, it helps you develop a stronger core and it means that you, you you just it helps you to sit upright as well I also wear fit flops so I've got my clogs on <laughs> I'll be showing you all the devices at this rate Th these are just my fit flop clogs but they've got Apparently the wobble board inside. I use these in hospice when I work in hospice. These are if I'm on my feet for a long period of time, but they make great slippers as well. And so when I'm standing upright, they also help you maintain a really good posture. So biomechanically, it's really important that you're aware of how you're standing or how you're sitting and holding yourself so that your lungs have got the space in order to expand correctly. Now, another of the reasons why we want to breathe through our nose is because we have, we have tiny hairs in our nostrils. We don't have them in our mouths. And those hairs filter out pollen, dust, stuff from the environment. When we breathe through our nose, we are also humidifying that air. So when it comes down into our lungs, it's already slightly moister, it's warmer. Whereas if we breathe through our mouth, there is no filter and it's cold. It's going directly down into our lungs. So, you know, we really should be as often as we can, unless you're completely bunged up with a cold or you struggle with allergies, which make it difficult to breathe through your nose. It's much more effective to breathe through your nose. Now, when you're talking, I mean, like I am right now, I'm doing a combination of nasal breathing and mouth breathing. I think if I actually did the whole video breathing through my nose, it'd be really annoying for you. And I'd probably get really dizzy. So you know, we have to be practical about this. It's going to be a combination of breathing through my nose and my mouth. Also, if you're running or doing something that exerts you, you are going to be breathing through your mouth. It's you get to a stage where you 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 need a bigger sort of opening in order to get more oxygen in. But you can also try and breathe through your nose to a degree as well when you are exerting yourself. So it's not about breathing through your nose all the time, but it's being mindful when you're at rest. And when you're sleeping to make sure that you're breathing through your nose as often as possible, just because of the um, the physical benefits that come with that. Now, nitric oxide is something we only produce when we breathe through our nose. Nitric, nitric oxide is a potent vasodilator. So it's really good for our heart health. It's good for our blood circulatory system. And it's an important aspect of actually getting air through our nose it also acts as a neurotransmitter so it can help regulate mood and of course you know through menopause we can become more irritable we can struggle with our mental health so nitric oxide is really going to have a positive impact on just how you're feeling um by breathing through your nose it's really important for your stress management so just talking about the biochemical aspect of nose breathing at the moment when we breathe through our nose it not only encourages the production of nitric oxide it also maximizes the amount of carbon dioxide we create <clears throat> so carbon dioxide is not just a waste product of breathing which i think a lot of us think it is it actually helps to um regulate the blood acidity alkaline levels so your blood ph it helps to keep that within a healthy range so your body is very clever. It will always balance itself out. However, if we can help it balance, then it leaves, frees up more energy to do the things like fighting viruses and keeping our body cell turnover proper and healthy rather than trying to fight the balance because our blood is either too acidic or too alkaline. And when we are shallow breathing, we restrict the amount of carbon dioxide we are capable of creating. And so it's, it is about breathing that into the deeper 
sections of your lungs in order to maximize the amount of carbon dioxide that you're creating as part of your breathing processes. One way of seeing how sensitive or not you are to carbon dioxide is to do a test called the BOLT test. It's quite an interesting test in actual fact. Make sure that you're sitting upright and just be focusing now. I mean, we can do it here. Focus on yourself just breathing in gently. We're not pushing any air into our lungs at all. We're just going to take a deep breath in. So focus on expanding your lower rib cage and then just out gently and then, you know, do a few of those breaths just gently in and out we're not looking to fill up massively and then exhale massively it is literally like you would normally breathe but when you're conscious of breathing healthily so just gently in through your nose expand those lower ribs and then out and then in a moment you want ideally to get your timer on your phone or on your computer or whatever it, it might be <clears throat> you want to be able to press the start button on your timer after you've taken a, an out breath, and then you want to see, you want to hold your nose, you want to see how long you can actually hold not having a breath inside of you comfortably before you get that either that urge that, you know, if you deep, dive deep into the water and you get that before you come up to the surface, I've, I've done that before, and your body's like, I need some air. Before you get to that, before you even think, oh, well, Need to take a, need to take a breath now. Just it's just data. There's no judgment. <clears throat> Ideally, you want to be able to hold no air. You know, after your out breath for around about 25 seconds. You want to be looking for 25 seconds and above. When I first did it, I did 32 seconds. But then I do. I'm very happy in the water. I'm very used to holding my breath. I feel really confident under the water. I'm pretty fit. And so, you know, that probably contributes to the fact I was able to do it for longer. Some people do it even longer than that. But I just thought, well, I'll, I'll see how long my bolt test works for. So don't worry if yours is like 10 seconds, 12 seconds. It doesn't matter. It's just data. But it does indicate to you that you ideally want to be practicing this bolt test, ideally three days, uh, three times a day. So, you know, just and that's just literally becoming more aware of your breathing. So. Breathing deeper, expanding your lower ribs and, and out, but in and out through your nose. And you'll find that when you do that timer test, your time will get better. And as you get beyond the 25 seconds, you'll think you'll know that you're achieving a lot better. And that means that your body is becoming less sensitive to the carbon dioxide, which is what you want to happen. You want your body to be able to, you know, balance out the oxygen and the carbon dioxide effectively. So if you can only hold it for a few seconds. That's not a problem at all. Just know that you need to practice working on that and ideally try and do that three times a day. You know, do it in the morning, do it at lunchtime, do it in the evening when you're relaxed. Don't try and do it if you're stressing and you're, you know, got loads of things going on. And if you can't do it every day, don't worry about it every day. Become mindful of, again, maybe even set a timer on your phone. So you, you set it three times a day so you can physically think, OK, I'm just going to do a little bit of breathing practice now. You only need to do it for two or three minutes at a time. But it's amazing how quickly that will improve your body's ability to have more carbon dioxide in it and feel comfortable because you want that to happen. Like I said earlier, it has a strongly beneficial impact on your mental health on your blood, on your heart health. Um, so you, you, you know, do make sure that you're practicing your breathing regularly. The other great thing about sort of moving into the biopsychological side of things is when you're deep breathing, it stimulates the vagus nerve. The va we, we cannot be stressed and relaxed at the same time. It's a physiological impossibility. By actively stimulating our vagus nerve, you're actively stimulating your relaxation response. So even if you're really stressed, and I'm a psychotherapist, I specialize in anxiety for children and for adults. And one of the first things I teach all of my customers, my clients, is how to deep breathe effectively to stimulate that vagus nerve, to stimulate that parasympathetic system to bring on that relaxation response. Because when you're going into a panic attack or if you've had a panic attack or you're in the middle of one, and you suddenly think, oh, I, I can actually bring my breathing in under control. And it's hard when you're in a panic attack. If you're actually in the middle of a full blown panic attack, it can be a challenge, but you can still do it. Everybody can absolutely still do it. 
a, a quick technique if you struggle with panic attacks and you're in the middle of one and you you, you know you, for, you just cannot the thought of actually trying to control your breath is just not even on not even on the plan do some star jumps or if you can't star jump just do some squats up and down up and down up and down and really squeeze the muscles of your lower legs and your bum muscles that in and of itself is going to be taking that energy and the stress hormones of your panic attack and putting it into something useful gives you a sense of control as well also because you're using the the larger muscles of your body it has it has like a dual effect it gives you that it puts you in the driver's seat you can really clench your muscles and you can really you're going to get rid of that panic attack or and, and and also because you're doing that it almost has a cardio effect on your body as well that necessarily is going to help gobble up some of those stress hormones that are flooding through your body as soon as you feel like you're bringing the breathing back into control that's when you really do need to then think right okay focus just focus shall just just nice not massive breathing just deep breathing allow those lower ribs to expand box breathing is a dead easy one just breathe in through your nose for four seconds hold it for four breathe out through your nose for four hold empty lung for four repeat so it is like a box in for four hold for four out for four, empty for four, in for four, hold for four, out for four, empty for four. And then increase that time as you're able to. If you're new to all this, just, just keep it really easy. But any control that you can bring around your breath is going to stimulate that relaxation response. And also understand that anxiety is 100% treatable. It 100% is. I work with people who have had the most awful, awful combination of terrible things that have happened to them and anxiety has just crept up to such a degree that they've almost well they have become locked in their homes you can do so much to overcome your anxiety it's it's you're never going to get rid of stress out there because there's always stress but you can build your resilience to stress and you can come up with techniques that will support you if you struggle with panic attacks if you struggle with extreme anxiety if you wake up in the early hours, bringing it back to menopause, and you know, you have that crushing anxiety on your chest or your stomach's churning, you're feeling nauseous, you've got the hot flushes, you're not sleeping properly because of all the stress that's going on. That sort of feeds the beast of, of stress and anxiety as well. So if you're waking up in those early hours, there are a couple of things you can do. Focus on your breathing, just gentle in and out and focusing on those lower ribs expanding. Do some box breathing. Try the bolt test. Give it a try. It doesn't matter if you're not sitting up. Just lie down. Just do it out of interest. Give it a shot. Um, and also focus on the, what I do if I have a really super busy brain is just focus on black. I just focus on visualizing black. And sometimes I have to bring my focus back because then my thoughts run off again and I start procrastinating or worrying about something completely ridiculous. And then I remember, no, I'm thinking about black. And when you can do that regularly, it works incredibly well, but you might have to keep bringing it back to that black until again, you're able to, to go off to sleep. Now, you might snore when you're asleep. So a good, a good exercise to try now is just, if you're sitting up straight, just tilt your head back a bit and then open your mouth and naturally your tongue slips to the back of your throat a little bit. The tongue's incredible. I mean, it's such a muscular piece of our uh, equipment, but you may find, particularly if you don't strength train, that the muscles in your neck are not very strong. And if they're not very strong, they might struggle to support sort of good throat and breathing apparatus when you're lying down in bed. It's why often, you know, people who sleep on their back, if you turn them over onto their sides, the snoring stops. It could be that if you can incorporate strength training, you will strengthen your neck muscles as well, because you do. I mean, anyone who strength trains because you're lifting heavy weights, you, your, your neck muscles necessarily get a workout as well. If you are overweight, that will also contribute to the risk of you snoring. Well, if you're snoring, you're not only 
possibly keeping your significant other awake, you also can wake yourself up with loud snoring. And I know not everybody is overweight, not everybody's got a soft throat and, and they still have terrible chronic snoring issues. But just be mindful of the fact that if you are snoring, there are things that you can do to help improve that, particularly if you like lying on your back. I mean, I I broke my neck years ago and because of my, I've got very mobile sacroiliac joints. So I, I sleep on my back a lot because I'm very comfortable on my back. I, I take my pillow away and I just completely lie flat, but I don't snore. If you are a snorer, uh, make sure you've just got a really good quality pillow so that, it, you know, it supports your 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 posture properly when you do lie on your side in bed and consider you know if you're not already strength training which you should be doing if you're menopausal to prevent brittle, brittle bone disease and soft bones and keep the cartilage and the uh, synovial fluid in your joints working well it's also really great for your mental health um it will help strengthen your neck and that might help with and, and also obviously if you've, you're overweight get rid of that extra weight if you're able to uh, if you want any help with that, just message me. There's always in the description beneath these videos, there is always some information there of links that you can click. And you're not you're not signing yourself self away. It's it's I will be in touch with you to ask, you know, specifically what you want to work on. It might suit you. It might not. You're not. <laughs> please don't think, oh, my God, if I fill in that form, she's she, that's it. I've got to join with her. No, not at all. But I will support you and I will advise you as to what I think is going to be best for you. And keeping a healthy weight will reduce your risk of cancer massively, but also it'll support your joints. It'll, it'll just help your symptoms of the menopause massively. Um, fat creates its own estrogen and it also hangs on to um, hormones that you don't want to be hanging on to. So healthy weight and um, also will help with your breathing. Nasal breathing will also reduce the amount of hot flushes that you get. It also helps you manage mood swings and anxiety because of the stimulation of the um, vagus nerve, because of the decreasing sensitivity to carbon dioxide, and also because of the production of nitric oxide within the nasal cavity. And finally, nasal breathing. I think this is really important. It really strengthens that mind-body connection. It's so easy just to automatically assume that we breathe and it keeps us alive because it's an automatic bodily response but when you can really focus on breathing healthily you know if you're standing in the queue at the supermarket just really focus on your breathing for a while nobody's going to know if you're in the traffic jam and you know just okay just do some deeper breathing allow your lower ribs to expand wherever you are whenever you catch yourself just waiting or sitting or not doing an awful lot make that a time when you can focus on really bringing some peace and and vitality to your body because there is absolutely no doubting oxygen increased blood flow carbon dioxide that helps to deliver the nutrients to the cells of the body breath is incredibly important for us. Breathing stimulates the lymphatic system. Our lymphatic system has no pump. So like our circulatory system, it has the heart. Our lymphatic system relies upon either us moving, which most of us don't do enough of, or breathing. So when your breathing is correct, you're stimulating your lymphatic system, which helps you detox your body. It helps keep those nasties away. It helps to reduce lymphedema, swelling, bagginess, puffiness. So breath work is, as well as helping balance the level of carbon dioxide in your body, helping produce the nitric oxide, which is so important for you, helping stimulate the relaxation response. It really does give, I mean, it, 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 is, it is such a vital part of, of a healthy life and healthy menopause. If you're in the habit of breathing through your mouth, there are a couple of things that you can do. You can use tape like micropore tape over your mouth to be honest I I mean I'm, I'm really relaxed about holding my breath but I don't actually know if I'd want to do that I think I would feel a little bit anxious but a lot of it, it works for a lot of people just put a small amount of tape in front of your mouth not really to keep your mouth locked shut but to remind you that you need to breathe through your nose and then this other this other stuff called myo tape which is like um it's, it's like a tape that goes around, it's, it's shaped in a rectangle or a square, 
and it's a sticky tape that goes around the outside of your mouth. It actually pulls your lips together, but it doesn't stop you breathing through your mouth. So if at night time, it's used with children a lot who need to be taught how to breathe through their nose. But if you find at night time, you know, you're, you're, you breathe through your mouth. You're like, oh. Some of us do. I catch myself sometimes too. I wake up and it's just like, how, how the heck did that happen? Um, you know, if, if, but if that's a regular occurrence for you, it could be worth trying that myo tape just so that you're becoming aware of it and just training your body to breathe through your nostril as the first choice rather than through your mouth. The so really nasal breathing can enhance your journey through the menopause on so many levels. I think we all obviously associate it with hormone imbalance and obviously sleep is incredibly important. Movement's incredibly important. What you eat and drink is very important, but also how you breathe is a vastly underrated, undermentioned aspect of something that we all have such easy access to. So I'd be really interested. Please drop it in the comments. You know, have you, are you aware of deep breathing and the benefits of deep breathing? Have you tried deep breathing to help you overcome anxiety? Have you found that, you know, you've you've done some of these procedures, you, you've done the bolt test and you've seen a significant improvement the more you've practiced it. It'd be really interesting to hear what your comments are. Um, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a future episode. If you've got anything you'd like to cover in a future episode, please just message me. I do have the odd comment from people saying how to contact me privately. You, again, click the link in the description, but you can find me on Instagram and also Facebook. And my Instagram and Facebook handle is at Kate Hartley UK. If you pop it in there, I will pop up my my face is there on my profile photo. It's obviously it's me, and um, you can send me a private message there, and I will make sure to respond to it because I appreciate not everybody wants to leave a comment publicly, and um, sometimes, especially if you're dealing with anxiety yourself and you want a little bit of extra support in the background, um, yeah, just message me privately on either Facebook or Instagram. And I will definitely uh, respond to you. The other option is to send me an email, kateheartleyuk at gmail.com. And, and I can respond to you that way if that's easier for you. So thank you for your company. And I will look forward to chatting with you again soon.